Okay guys, let's go through all the steps in order for your Siemens S7-1200 to be talking to your factory I.O. seamlessly. Uh, so I'm here at the, the getting started overview here. The way that you get here if you're on factory I.O. is by double clicking on this icon right here. That will open up, the, so all the manuals are available online. So that'll open up your browser. Uh, and then you can go through navigating, opening a scene, creating a scene, manually controlling a scene. What we're interested in is controlling with the PLCs. We're going to click on this. Okay, so for this guy, um, the example is using the S7-1200 here. So what we're going to do is you can go through on here and you can uh, you can check all the different steps here. So it says, now you've created your factory, it's time to control it with the PLC, but first you should learn what the I.O. drivers are and how to use them. An I.O. driver is a built-in feature of factory I.O. responsible for talking to an external controller. Factory I.O. uses many I.O. drivers, each one for a specific specific PLC. So there's ones for um, Siemens and Alan Bradley and uh, Omron here. So you can select a, a driver in factor IO based on the controller you want to use. Next, you configure this driver so it knows how to talk to the controller and how to read and write IO from it. As an example, this tutorial shows you how to use the Siemens S7-1200. Beautiful, because that's one we're using. However, most of the steps described here apply to all the other drivers. Okay, so open the drivers window by clicking on file and next on drivers. Alternately, alternately you may open the drivers window by left clicking on the current driver displayed on the status bar. Okay, so in, uh, in factor IO, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new, a new environment here. Um, and if we go to here and go to drivers, then it looks like I've already selected the Siemens 1200. Like if I, uh, chose Allen Bradley Micrologics, then other, there's another image that comes up. If we go to our Siemens S7-1200, beautiful, then all of the inputs and outputs are available for us to use. Um, where we opened up a new, um, a new file, because if we opened up, if we go back, if we opened up one of the pre, pre-configured scenes, um, then we'd be stuck with the inputs and outputs that, uh, that are used for that scene. So it's much better to just open a new scene and then we can set up the drivers and we can use all the bits and pieces um, and we'll be able to use all of the inputs and outputs that are available on our PLC. Okay, so again, uh, we're going to file. We're going to drivers here. Okay, we went down and we chose S7-1200 and let's keep going and see what it tells us to do. Select the Siemens S7-1200 Ethernet driver from the list by left clicking on it. Okay, we've done that. Click on the configuration button to set up the driver according to your PLC model and IP address. Okay, so our next thing is to go to here. We're gonna to go to configuration. Now I've, I've already set this up, but I have my model S7-1200. I put in my host IP address, so 192.168.0.10. And I'm using my Surface Ethernet adapter. I have a Surface Pro and I'm using the Ethernet uh, cable to talk to my PLC. Okay, let's make sure that we've done everything there. Okay, um, press the connect button to connect to the PLC. A successful connection will be indicated by a green sign displayed next to the driver's list. Note that you will find some factor IO tags displayed in the sensor list highlighted on the image below. These tags can be used by the controller so you can be aware of the status Okay, so there are a number of different inputs here that you can make use of uh, to see that the factory IO is actually running. Okay, but it's saying uh, to go back one page here and go to connect and see whether we need to see a green light there. Okay, so we're going to go back to this image right here. There we go. Okay, we're going to go to connect. And I don't think this is going to connect in because we haven't set up our PLC yet in order to talk to the factory IO. Let's see what's happening here. No, see it's failed to connect to our PLC. So there's a number of steps that we need to do first on our Siemens Step 7 program in order to connect into our factory IO. Okay, so if we scroll down on this page here, at the base of this instruction page, uh, it tells us that, well, they're, they're expecting us to already have connection between the uh, factory IO and our PLC. At the moment, that's not working. 
Uh, if we scroll down to the bottom here, it says that start mapping uh, your tags by dragging and dropping them onto the intended port. So you can bring your inputs and your outputs over, uh, but we need to make sure that our PLC is talking to, to our factor IO. Uh, so we have to follow these steps here. If you want to know more about each IO driver, refer to the IO drivers. For additional information on the topics covered in this getting started, see the factor IO manual. So uh, over here on the left hand side, we're going to open up manual. And we're going to scroll down until we see I.O. drivers. Okay, we're going to open this guy up. And we're looking for our S7-1200. There we go. So we're going to click on this tab right here. Okay. Um, this, again, goes through all the steps, connecting up and doing the configuration. So that's everything that we've just done already. Tells us a little bit about our analog values, uh, but we're not interested in that. What we're interested in is uh, actually at the top of the page here. Um, the tutorial setting up this S7-1200. So let's click on this guy right here. Okay, so this is our main thing, setting up communication between the PC and the PLC. So connect the PC to the network, or the PLC to the network, because so <clears throat> I've already got uh, my computer connected up to my router. So I'm making use of a router. Um, you could just have your uh, ethernet cable going from your computer to your PLC, but I'm going to make use of a router because later on I'm going to make use of an HMI. So I need a router to connect into both my PLC and my HMI. Okay, so we're going to create a new project. We're going to configure that device. Um, all the things that we've already done in setting up our PLC. So basically, we're going to open up our base PLC program. Um, again, this is telling us to open up a, um, an unspecified PLC. Doing all the same steps as we've done before. Okay. And the last thing we need to do is uh, set up our IP here. So let's open up our TAA portal here. Okay. I'm going to go over to uh, my overview here or the portal view. Okay, I'm going to open up my PLC1 here, which should already be configured. Once you have the factor IO and the TIA portal open at the same time, I also have the screen recorder open at the same time, so it takes a little bit of time for everything to come in here. Okay, so here we have the S7-1200 in front of us. I've opened it up. Uh, and I'm now at 400%, so I can actually see the, the PLC. Um, and if we go back to our instructions here, uh, the detected PLC is now in the device view. Some of its properties need to be tweaked to allow communication with the factor IO. Double left click on the controller to open the properties panel. Okay. Start by assigning the PLC an IP address on the general tab of the properties page. Expand the Profinet interface and select Ethernet addresses. Okay, so we're going to Profinet interface and then Ethernet addresses. And we're getting there by double left clicking on our PLC. So double left click, we'll open up the properties here. Okay, if we now scroll up here, uh, we're going to Profinet and then Ethernet addresses. Excellent. Okay, let me see if I can just bring this up just a touch. Can I bring this up a touch? There we go. Now we can see everything. Uh, so if you're not using a router, then don't select this. Um, the IP, IP address that I'm using is matching with uh, the subnet of my router. So my router is 192.168.0.1. And so normally, just something that I do, I keep my PLC as .10 and my HMI as .12. Okay, my router is 192.168.0.1. So you can see that these guys are matching together. Okay. If you're not making use of a router, then just use uh, your IP address and the subnet mask. Don't you don't select this guy right here. Okay. So you're selecting this guy, putting in your router address if you're making use of that, and we're good to go. Okay. Next thing um, is if you were prompted to assign a new IP address to the network interface, you should now assign an IP address to the PLC that is in the same sub subnet as your computer. Okay. We've done that. Okay. PLC physical inputs used by default 
uh, the first memory addresses of the percent %i. For factor IO to be able to write sensor values to percent %i, you must offset the input addresses, and we recommend an offset of 10. Click on IO addresses and change the input addresses start address to 10. Okay, so we're now going here to D18, D06, and we're going to digital uh, inputs and outputs, and below that we have IO addresses, and we're going to change this to an offset of 10. Okay, so let's go here, that was here, and right here we have IO addresses. So let's click on that guy right here. Okay, I've already done this, um, but again, you can uh, change that value here. Okay, so you should be able to change that value. Um, usually yours says zero, right? So it's set up like this, and you're going to change that to a value of 10. The reason for that is that, um, Let's see, on the top of our Siemens S7-1200, we have eight individual inputs, like eight hardwired inputs. So what we're going to do is we're going to offset the in input addresses to start at 10, and then we can negate any of our inputs that are coming in as physical inputs from those I.O. Otherwise, it won't be, you won't be able to see the, the change of the, the IO addresses on the PLC matching with your factory IO. So we have to do this offset here of our IO addresses. Okay, so we've done that. Let's scroll down. Okay, so yeah, it says factory IO uh, should not use input addresses that are assigned to physical inputs, which would be I0.0 uh, through I0.7. Uh, otherwise, the, the values written by factor IO will be overwritten as the state of physical inputs is copied to the input memory. Okay, finally, we must give full access to the PLC memory. Click on Protection and select Full Access, No Protection. Okay, also under Connection Mechanisms, check Permit Access with PUTGET Communication from Remote Partner. Okay, so let's just scroll down a touch here. Okay, so we're going down to Protection. We're giving full access, and then we're permitting the PUTGET. Okay, so let's find that in our portal now. So we're going down here to protection. There we go. So we're opening this guy up. Okay, we're allowing full access, so no protection whatsoever. And if we scroll down here, there you go. You're also going to have to click this button right here, permit access with PUTGET communications from remote partner. Excellent. I believe that's everything we need to do. Let's just make sure. Okay, for PLCs, okay, we don't have that. Right-click on the device and select Download to Device and select Hardware Configuration, and next start the CPU. Okay, so we've made these changes to the hardware. We now need to download that to our PLC. So we're going to right-click on our PLC here. Okay, then we're going to go to Download to Device and we're gonna download the hardware configuration. Uh, make sure that you have your PLC turned on. I do not have mine turned on, so give me two seconds. Excellent, okay, so here's our next window here. So we're gonna start a search, we're gonna tone out and find our PLC. So you can see here that it's going out, searching for compatible devices. It's found uh, both my PLC, my PLC from previous uh, things has a, another IP address here, and then there's my HMI as well. Okay, we're just waiting for the PLC to come in here as a device. Okay, here it is. Again, if we want to make sure that that is the actual PLC, we can flash the LEDs, and we should find that the run, stop, error, and maintenance LEDs are now flashing. which they are, okay. I'm gonna deselect this. I'm now going to select the PLC and I'm gonna hit load. Okay, again, this is what they were talking about uh, that sometimes the program will ask you to do an additional IP address that's in the same subnet as the device. We'll hit yes. Okay, so it's added this one here again on zero, but it's now 241, that's fine. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is uh, is load this in here. Okay, and we're going to start the PLC, so we're going to hit finish. 
Excellent. Okay, loading complete. Errors are zero. Warnings are zero as well. Beautiful. Let's go back to our manual here and just make sure that we have done everything that they've asked us to. Okay, so we've done all the configuration on the uh, on the PLC. Let's go back to our factory I.O. and see if we can talk to it now. Okay, so I believe I still have this guy open. So this is my new scene here. I'm going to File, Drivers. Okay, again, I've selected my S7-1200. Okay, I'm coming over here to Configuration just to make sure that nothing has changed. Everything looks good. Okay, I don't like to, to use this Auto Connect. I like to decide when I'm connecting up to it. Okay, so last thing we need to do is hit connect and it will tone out and hopefully be able to talk between the two programs. Let's go, buddy. Let's see it. Okay. Ah, nice. There we go. We've got a green light. Everything's set up. So now our factor IO and our Siemens TIA portal are now talking to each other. Sweet. Okay, let's go back to the manual here. Uh, we've done this. We've selected the drivers. Looks good. We've done the configuration. We have hit connect and we now see a green light. Very nice. All right, guys. So quite a few steps there in order to, uh, to have both the programs talking to each other. Once you have this set up, then what I want you to do is go to your portal now. And now I want you to save this, right? So, uh, for this guy right here, I've saved it as my base PLC program for factory IO. So we'll hit save. It's good. It'll say I already have an existing one and I'll say yes. Okay, so now um, you had your base PLC program from before. So if you're just talking to your, your PLC, then have one program. Uh, but if you're also integrating it uh, with the factory IO, then save it under a, another base program. So this is your, your new template. And it, anytime that you're working with the, the factory IO, you're going to open this one up. You're not going to do anything to this program whatsoever. Right, there are no tags, there is no program whatsoever here. All you've done is done the hardware configuration. Once you've set this up and you want to do a timer program or a counter program, then you're again you're going to go to project, you're going to go to save as, and you're going to save it as a different name, keeping this base program that you can open up anytime that you need to work with TIA portal and the factory IO. All right, guys, hopefully all the steps were clear. Um, and hopefully you've been able to, to now communicate between the two devices. And now we can move on. We're going to start off with the two-wire control. So keep going in the playlist here. And the next video will show us how to configure uh, a simple two-wire control with our factory I.O. All right, guys. Thanks for your patience. We'll see you in the next video.